हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल गुरु रामदास एजुकेशनल सोसाइटी आई एम डॉक्टर जगजीत सिंह टुडे आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक अबाउट हाइपरटेंशन व्हाट इज हाइपरटेंशन हाइपरटेंशन और हाई ब्लड प्रेशर इज अ मेडिकल कंडीशन विद देयर इज परसिस्टेंस एलिवेशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर अबाउट वन मिलियन पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज ग्लोबली अफेक्टेड बाई हाइपर टेंशन एफ्रीकन्स आर वेरी प्रोन टू गेट अफेक्टेड बाई इंक्रीज इन ब्लड प्रेशर कमिंग टू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन स्टीफन हेल्स इन सेवनटीन थर्टी थ्री मेजर्ड ब्लड प्रेशर एंड लेटर रिविडिया इन एटीन नाइन्टी सिक्स ए साइंटिस्ट ए फिजिशियन हु has uh, invented a cuff's fignon manometer that is a apparatus to measure blood pressure told that told that that we can measure blood pressure using this technique later kotskov sounds which are named after the scientist nikolai kotkov we measure blood pressure by taking a stethoscope in the site of antecubital fossa and uh, we hear the kotskov sounds on deflation of mercury so in this way we measure blood pressure knowing the person has hypertension or not now i have talked about the instrument that is used to measure blood pressure in all hospitals and in healthcare clinics they use this type of method but there are some automated methods which are based on oscillometry and they can measure blood pressure without cuff arm so cuffless measurements are also nowadays very common all over the world not only in the developed countries but also in the developing countries the classification of hypertension given by european society of cardiology and european society of hypertension states that there are different levels of hypertension it can be optimal hypertension normal high normal levels of blood pressure then it can be high normal that is pre hypertensive state there can be stage 1 hypertension stage 2 hypertension and stage 3 hypertension suppose the blood pressure increases in a patient we have to grade it according to the classification so classification is very essential part of knowing whether the person has a high blood pressure or normal blood pressure or a stage 1 hypertension or a stage 2 hypertension and depending on the classification we will treat that patient if blood pressure is about 115 upon 75 mm of hg if systolic is 115 and diastolic is 75 mm hg then it is very a uh, good for a person and he is free of risk factors if you measure the blood pressure in morning if you measure the blood pressure in morning at your home and evening there will be high levels of blood pressure readings so you can get a blood pressure reading of 130 to uh, 80 mm of hg or 129 to 100 mm of hg depending on different kinds of people now night blood pressure is very crucial indicator because it will show a lower range of blood pressure and that is indicating whether a person is having a cardiovascular risk or not now after consumption of food if we measure the blood pressure the blood pressure will increase so consumption of food and different kinds of dietary changes have influenced and produced a different impact on blood pressure now if we measure the blood pressure on right arm and left arm if we measure blood pressure on right arm and we measure the blood pressure on right left arm we can see a difference in blood pressure and that is known as pulse pressure so that difference in blood pressure which is known as pulse pressure is small but if it is of large magnitude then that is indicating an abnormality as age increases blood pressure increases because arteries become more stiff and less compliant and as a result of it in people who are elderly 
they can have a normal blood pressure of 150 upon 90 mm of hg in early adulthood the blood pressure increases so for example ages between 20 to 26 years of age or 30 years of age they can have a slightly increased blood pressure but that can be normal and in midlife suppose a person is lying between 40 to 45 years of age he can have a blood pressure which is very stable it will not increase neither decrease it will be stable it will form a plateau but after 40 years of age there will be slight increase in blood pressure and with increase in blood pressure there will be increase in pulse pressure this is the other parameter to explain blood pressure in a different terminology now fluctuations fluctuations are very common in different age groups with different kinds of blood pressure readings so if you come from newborn infants to infants and children and pre-adolescents and adolescents the blood pressure increases in increasing order so it will be smaller value then larger value then larger value in this way the blood pressure will change there is also one more factor that influences blood pressure that is the pumping of the heart heart will pump more blood when the blood pressure is low it is due to activation of an autonomic nervous system which is known as sympathetic nervous system that increases heart rate it increases more beating of heart in one minute so that will increase cardiac output more output more blood is coming out of the heart due to decrease in blood pressure now blood pressure can be regulated in two ways one is short term regulation of blood pressure another is long term regulation of blood pressure in short term regulation of blood pressure there are baroreceptors that will sense a signal that the blood pressure is low and they will transfer a signal to medulla medulla which is the part of the brain stem and from there the signal will go to the sympathetic nervous system it is a type of a nervous system which will accelerate the blood pressure by increasing the heart rate and by increasing the heart contractility so it will have a accelerative impact on heart now after this the blood pressure is also regulated in long term basis how it is regulated whenever the blood from the heart decreases the blood going to the kidney also decreases as a result of it there are compensatory mechanisms called juxtaglomerular cells these cells which are present outside the glomerulus and within the nephron will increase the production of renin this is a protein and a hormone called renin this renin what it will do it will convert angiotensinogen this angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 now this angiotensin 1 for its further conversion it goes to the lungs where ACE is produced ACE means angiotensin converting enzyme and in presence of this angiotensin converting enzyme the angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 and this angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor potent vasoconstrictor means it can cause constriction squeezing of the blood vessel and thereby increasing the blood pressure the other portion of this angiotensin 2 is that this angiotensin 2 it will bind to the angiotensin 2 receptor which is present in the adrenal cortex and that will cause the release of aldosterone this is the other protein which is produced from adrenal cortex now this aldosterone what it is doing it is going to the kidneys and it is uh, acting on distal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule is a part of the nephron and nephron is part of the kidney so within the kidney these things are happening now aldosterone when it binds to its aldosterone receptor in distal convoluted tubule 
it will retain more sodium and water and it will decrease it will increase the excretion of potassium and H plus ions so as a result of it when sodium is retained more more water is retained and that will increase the blood volume leading to increase in blood pressure so this is a long term regulation of blood pressure now I would come to a disorder of high blood pressure which is known as hypertension hypertension is of two types primary hypertension and secondary hypertension in primary hypertension it is also known as essential hypertension it is seen in 90 to 95 percent of cases and it is associated with genetics and lifestyle changes secondary hypertension can be due to identifiable causes like hyperthyroidism hyperparathyroidism Cushing syndrome pheochromocytoma renal artery stenosis due to fibromuscular dysplasia arterial aneurysm coarctation of iota so these conditions can show secondary hypertension now coming to the percentage 5 to 10 percent cases of patients have secondary hypertension and in those cases we have to see the underlying cause now coming to one more condition called hypertensive crisis what is hypertensive crisis hypertensive crisis is a severe elevation of blood pressure above 160 systolic and 110 diastolic hypertensive crisis can be associated with end organ damage if there is an hypertension if there is increase in blood pressure with damage to kidney brain or heart then we call it as hypertensive emergency and if there is increase in blood pressure without damage to brain kidney and heart it is known as hypertensive emergency hypertension can also be seen during pregnancy 5 to 10 percent cases of pregnant women can have hypertension and if that increase in blood pressure in a pregnant woman during second half of pregnancy and after delivery there is increase in blood pressure then we call it as preeclampsia that condition is known as preeclampsia in that cases the patients will have reporting reporting of headache uh, nausea vomiting abdominal pain these type of symptoms could be seen there can be gestational hypertension gestational hypertension means there is a new onset hypertension there is no known cause but there is a new onset hypertension without protein loss in urine that is known as gestational hypertension now coming to diagnosis of hypertension how to diagnose hypertension hypertension is diagnosed in ambulatory measurements with 48 with 24 to 48 hour period so we measure blood pressure in patients regularly and at regular intervals we note down their blood pressures and this is done in a quiet environment so that there is no parallax error or other types of errors to be noticed there is one more type of hypertension we call it as pseudo hypertension what is pseudo hypertension pseudo hypertension is due to the calcification of a blood vessel a blood vessel is calcified it is coated with calcium and as a result of it there is a false elevation of blood pressure but when we measure the blood pressure within the artery using invasive techniques it is it is found that the blood pressure is normal so it is known as pseudo hypertension there is one more type of hypertension which we call it as hyperkinetic borderline hypertension this is due to the excess functioning of the heart which pumps more blood into the iota and more blood goes to the different kinds of arteries of the arterial system and as a result of it there is a hyperkinetic borderline hypertension now these kinds of hypertensions can be diagnosed in an ambulatory setting we have to measure the blood pressure at regular intervals the american heart association guideline recommends that 
taking three blood pressure readings in two separate clinical visits can help in diagnosis of hypertension but there is no other effective method to measure blood pressure in patients with hypertension suppose patients are having kid chronic kidney disease or patients are having diabetes or they have different comorbid conditions in that case we have to go for specific organ investigations for example in kidney we have to go for microscopic analysis and uh, we have to measure serum creatinine blood urea nitrogen levels in case of metabolic we have to see fasting blood glucose levels level of uh, ldl cholesterol total cholesterol triglycerides levels in association with endocrine pathologies if there is uh, breakthrough of hypertension we have to measure serum calcium serum pod sodium serum potassium and tsh levels now these investigation techniques help us to understand secondary causes of hypertension there is one more type of hypertension we call it as resistant hypertension resistant hypertension arises when the blood pressure is not controlled despite of administration of anti hypertensive uh, anti hypertensive drugs now how to prevent hypertension we can prevent hypertension by undergoing dietary modifications lifestyle changes person should regularly do exercise or perform physical activity more than 30 minutes per day he must restrict or stop taking salt intake and it must be below 100 millimoles per day and he must restrict alcohol intake he must restrict alcohol intake that is below 3 units per day and the body mass index of these patients must be between 20 to 25 kg per meter square so in these situations if a person undergoes these modificatory changes we can control hypertension now there are some anti hypertensive drugs that are used to control blood pressure for example angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers calcium channel blockers chlorothiazide diuretics so these are uh, found evident that they can control hypertension now in case of diabetics and chronic kidney disease the low blood pressure targets must be brought down by giving a combination of anti hypertensive medications if we are able to control the blood pressure we are able to control the level of stroke and ischemic heart disease by 34% and 21% respectively so if we control the blood pressure the secondary conditions can also be controlled easily now i have talked everything about hypertension that what is blood pressure what is hypertension how can we prevent hypertension and what are the dietary modifications there is a dash diet that is dietary approach to control hypertension wherein uh, there is an advice from the us preventive task force that fruits enriched with vitamins and minerals must be consumed on daily basis and uh, they must take a low sodium diet diet more rich in uh, diet more rich in potassium and different kinds of minerals diet rich in zinc can also be administered a research is going on in 2015 a review study told that administration of vitamin d of 1000 iu per day can reduce blood pressure with underlying vitamin d deficiency this is a research that is going on but i would like to say that if we undergo if we understand the lifestyle modifications and we take anti hypertensive medications as per the physician's advice we can control blood pressure and we can bring down the global risk of blood pressure by many folds thanks for watching my video please subscribe to my channel and share as much as possible thank you